This summer has seen a huge movement of people across Europe, from Greece in the east to Calais in the west. All started their journeys outside the EU. All will end up claiming asylum in a European country. In July, the overall number crossing into the continent jumped above 100,000 for the first time in a single month. Budapest train station in Hungary has been packed with migrants trying to get on trains north to Austria, Germany or Sweden. Many have escaped war or persecution, so some people think a better description is refugee. Others say that term ignores those making the journey for economic reasons. Well, let me go. Yes, I want go. My children, very tired, very bad here. Very bad. It's where these people end up that now has politicians across the continent bickering. There is a huge difference between the promises they're making and what's happening on the ground. The UK has said it will take 500 refugees from Syria under its Vulnerable Persons Relocation Scheme. Germany has officially said it will take 35,000 Syrians, France an extra thousand, Sweden 2,700. Now look at the reality. More than 2,000 Syrians have arrived in the UK over the past year claiming asylum. In Germany, that number is almost 60,000. France, more than 3,000. Sweden, more than 26,000. Germany in particular is warning the levels are unsustainable, with a total of 800,000 asylum claims expected in 2015. Chancellor Merkel wants others, including the UK, to share some of that burden. Germany's top-selling tabloid was less diplomatic this week. The Skyvers of Europe, says the headline, with David Cameron's face in the middle. That all puts the Prime Minister in a difficult position. He says simply letting more people in won't solve the underlying problem. We uh, think the most important thing is to try to uh, bring peace and stability to that part of the world. I don't think there is an answer that can be uh, achieved simply by uh, uh, taking more and more uh, refugees. Much has been made of the unprecedented nature of this crisis, but it's worth looking back to see how the numbers stack up. The UN says the refugee problem in Syria is the worst since the Second World War, but most of the people affected are spread out over neighbouring countries like Turkey and Lebanon. The numbers entering the EU are the highest on record, but there have been peaks not all that different in the past. In the late 90s, the Kosovo conflict led to a spike in refugees crossing the border. And earlier in the decade, the same thing happened when war broke out in what was then Yugoslavia. In both of those cases, the numbers claiming asylum in the UK were in fact much greater than today. The figure peaked to 84,000 in 2002 amid instability in Iraq and the fall of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Back then, it was Britain, not Germany, taking in more refugees than anyone else. Going back further still, we granted asylum to thousands of Vietnamese and Ugandans in the 1970s and thousands more Hungarians and Czechs after uprisings against Soviet rule in the 1950s and 60s. Today, the situation is, of course, different in so many ways. Open borders, modern forms of travel and new forms of communication make the crisis much more unstable and potentially much more difficult for the politicians to control.